Hello friends and welcome to part two of our Fast API tutorial. Uh, in this tutorial we're going to be talking about uh, path parameters. First let's go in and we're going to make sure that our app is running. I have this, I had it running before, now I hit refresh and it's not going to work because the app is not running. We have our virtual environment activated. So we're going to go in here and type in uvicorn main app dash dash reload and we can see now it's running on 8000 and it reloaded because I guess it hadn't finished uh, reloading from before. So a path parameter if you're at all curious localhost 8000 and if we were to go somewhere like I don't know hello we would get detail not found or 123 detail not found. This value that's in the URL that I don't know if I can actually zoom that in or not uh, that is our path parameter. So if we want to add in functionality where we can pass a path parameter in, this is the sort of thing where if you were to do app.get items, async def get, or let's say list items, return, we will just say message list items route okay now if we go into here and we type in items we're going to see we're in the list items route which is fine this is your standard get request um, if you wanted to search for a specific item your path parameter in this sort of situation would return the id say five or something like that so what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to do app.get and we're going to pass in items and then here we're going to pass in our item ID and here we will redefine this get item and we're going to pass in item ID as our parameter and then we can actually just return item ID and then we'll just return the item ID that shows up there so now if we don't have to do anything else. We can refresh the page because we already had localhost slash items slash five. We return and we get a value of five. But this is somewhat strange. This is showing as a string. This is where uh, Pydantic can come into play and Pydantic can shine a little bit. Um, what we can do is we can tell FastAPI that we want our item ID to be an integer. Now if we hit save and we reload, we will reload this and you notice we get 5 as our actual result here. The thing that you need to you need to think about though and that you need to realize is that if we were to pass in something like hello in this in this situation it wouldn't work. You can see we get this error value is not a valid integer. But if we were to remo remove this save it and reload it would work again so there are some ways that you can you can get around that um, if you can um, if you can have typing in here pretty much anywhere you can that's generally the way you want it you want to do it you you I mean Python 3.6 I think and above especially 3.10 they're, they're getting really good with their uh, with their you know type safety uh, it's not a static type, statically typed language. It's not a compiled language, but you know this is it, it's very very good. We should definitely make use of it where we can. We can go ahead and refresh this. We can return one two three here. We're still going to get this string. Let's put this back to an integer though. There, we refresh the page and we're good. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the actual documentation here to see if we refresh this page. Now we have a couple of these um, these new items here, or these new routes, I should say. We can execute this, and we get the message that we received before. We can come down here. This is where um, Pydantic's sort of built-in help with this can, can help. If we go into here, and we try and type in hello, FastAPI's Swagger documentation is not going to let us 
pass in this hello string because it's telling us it needs to be an integer. If we pass in 6789, then it will work and we will return that item ID of 6789. If there is a, let's change this to a string just so I can show you. We're gonna refresh this page. We're gonna to have to hit try it out again. Again, we can do five, six, four, two. I don't know why I'm picking these random numbers. This returns the string. Okay, perfect. Now though, let's let's add in a little a little caveat here. So I'm gonna change this to users. I'm gonna change this to users. And we're going to say user ID. And this can be a string. That's fine. It doesn't really matter right now. List. I should have probably just done this right from the beginning. Okay. Now, if we want to set it up like this, we can do this. It's really no different than it was before. We still get this and we're good. Now, let's add a route where we can do app.get slash users slash me. You know, typically when you have an app that you're building, um, get current user. Return this. Oh, here, we'll do message. This is the current user. So a lot of times when you're building an app like this, you know, you're going to want the user to be able to get information about themselves. You generally don't want to have, unless they're an admin or something like that, they shouldn't be able to just fetch a user by user ID, unless you want to, you know, you have a public profile sort of situation, something like that. Um, but you're, you're also going to have, you know, a, a setup like this. Now, if we run this, we try it out, we execute, and we're good. We get this is the current user because we have explicitly hit this route right here. If we go into here and we type in um, Josh Allen, you can see we get the user ID is Josh Allen. I don't know why, I'm not a Bills fan, but whatever, it doesn't matter. The difference here though is this will work if we're using Swagger, but if we go into users slash me, this is not actually returning if we remember here, oh Lord, I hate that part. Um, this is not actually returning the, this is the current user route. What this is doing is this is hitting the first route that qualifies. We're telling our, our app here that the user ID is a string. Well, we're passing in this string. It happens to match this route down here, but it's not actually getting here. What FastAPI will do is it will just go through the list of routes. If it matches this as a get request, then it returns this. As a post, it returns this. As a put, it returns this. Here, we're going to users slash something that's a string. Here, we're doing user, and this should be users. Let's refresh the page. Let's just make sure that this still works, unless I did something stupid. Oh, here we go. There. So it doesn't even work in Swagger. I sit corrected. Um, so what this is going to do is this is just going to to cycle through, and it's going to um, find the first matching route. So if you have something that you want to be specific, where the structure is going to look the same, and you want to allow a specific endpoint first before a dynamic endpoint, you have to put it before the dynamic endpoint. Now, if we refresh the page, we can see this is the current user. Any other string that we put in here, it will return Bob. This will, let's see if this works. Joe Smith. Yeah, it converted it. Okay, so that's, that's key here, that's important. The, the order that you're putting these routes matters. Uh, last thing we'll touch on is um, uh, we're going to include uh, specific types. So from enum, we're going to import the enum package, and we're going to declare uh, food enum. So let's see, we're going to say fruits equals fruits. 
vegetables equals vegetables and dairy equals dairy. And now what we're going to do is we're going to actually add in app.get foods food name. And then we're going to declare the function get food. And we're going to say food name is going to be part of our food enum. Now, there are a few things that we can do with this. The first thing that we can do is we can check to see based on the actual the the model name what uh, what what the the value is that we get. So if we can do um, if um, food name equals food enum dot vegetables, then we're going to return food name food name message you are healthy there next we're going to go in here and we're going to type in if food name dot value equals fruits return food name food name message you are still healthy but like sweet things I don't know I don't know why I'm picking this I probably should have done this ahead of time a little bit um, so we're checking to see if the food name which is a food enum which we've declared up here is the the member of this class called vegetables then we return this. We can also check, we don't have to check based on the actual model type, or the class type I should say. We can instead check the value of this instance that's passed in, which here is just going to be a string because we're declaring this string enum. Otherwise, return food name food name and message um, I don't know I like chocolate milk I honestly have no idea why I picked these things okay so we now have this extra app right here and what we're gonna do is we're going to try foods slash meat and we can see we get a, a nice little descriptive error Value is not a valid enumeration member. It tells us we can have fruits, vegetables, or dairy. And you can see we got this 422 error, unprocessable identity. So it, it didn't conform to what FastAPI and Pydantic were telling us it, it's allowed to conform to. If we were to pass in instead vegetables, you are healthy. Fruits, you are still healthy. Or dairy, I like chocolate milk. And we can go into our docs, and if we refresh the page, we'll scrunch these up a little bit. The thing that's nice about our docs here is it gives us a drop-down. It doesn't even give us the option of adding something else. Um, so we can, you know, we can go in here and we get the same exact results. Okay. So I think uh, for now, I think that's pretty much it. Um, there's not really much else that we want to touch on in terms of path parameters. Um, this is a very simple introduction. You know, we'll get into to more of this sort of stuff in, in later videos. Uh, in the next video, we are going to talk about um, query parameters, which is, you know, if you're searching for, uh, you know, if you want to do a question mark, hello equals world. This is the query parameter that we're going to pass in. So uh, until the next video, have a good day.